welcome. Welcome to today's video blog. My name is Ross Rosenberg. I'm a psychotherapist and I wrote the book, The Human Magnet Syndrome, Why We Love People Who Hurt Us. I've come to understand that codependency is a secondary condition. It's really a symptom of deeper problems. And when we understand codependency is not the problem that we treat, but a problem that is caused by something deeper, we therapists have a better opportunity to solve the problem. Codependency really is a product of deep shame, but more than that, of trauma. The type of trauma that I'm speaking of is attachment trauma. And attachment trauma is what occurs during the early years of one's life during which they are bonding with their parent. If a child has a narcissistic parent, and, and by the way, I've explained this in detail in many of my other YouTube videos, but if a child has a narcissistic parent, they cannot be loved unconditionally. A child who learns to survive or cope with this difficult environment learns to be the nice child, the pleasing child, the trophy child. This trophy child um, figures out a way to get or stimulate their narcissistic parent to love them. So early on, they become a human doing versus a human being. Or in other words, they learn to get love or to be worthy of love you have to listen carefully and watch and scan one's environment to figure out what you need to do to make someone else happy. This child who learns to make the narcissist happy, and there's many ways to do this, gets what he or she needs to survive their childhood. But what they don't get is a feeling of self-worth or self-love. And early on, they experience a sense or a feeling of deep loneliness. So as I said in my, other, in my other videos, this child who comes from a, a narcissistic parent develops a relationship template that is about giving to others in order to feel loved or to feel um, comfortable in one's own skin. Um, they take that relationship template and it manifests into codependency. At the very core of this codependent is a sense of loneliness, a sense of loneliness that is deeply painful burns with pain. And the only way that the codependent can solve or um, get rid of this loneliness is to find someone that will take it away. And since they are geared towards falling in love with a narcissist, as described in the human magnet syndrome, they find that the relationship with a narcissist takes away that feeling of loneliness and makes them feel comfortable in their own skin. So when in a relationship with a narcissist, the codependent feels complete. As I've discussed um, in other videos and in a um, Huffington Post article called Relationship Math, this is really a relationship comprised of two underdeveloped people. What I, how I refer to it is half person. So if we think about it, if we think about it, a half person or a codependent who has suffered attachment trauma um, is going to be attracted to a narcissist and the narcissist as we as we talked about in other videos suffered even more intense attachment trauma so th these two people that never were fully developed come together in a relationship as one person and what I mean by one person is they need each other to feel good this is why the codependent narcissist relationship starts off so quickly, so intensely, and often sexually. In order to feel complete and whole in the world in which they live, they need to connect to another person. So this half person and another half person equal one. And one, this is my relationship math, one person equals a half a relationship. Because in healthy relationships, we have two individuated people doesn't necessarily have to be perfectly healthy or normal because I don't really think anyone is perfectly normal or health, healthy. I think that's the human condition. But two individuated people come together and they create one relationship based upon two individuals. So what does this have to do with trauma and loneliness? The codependent who needs another person to feel good about themselves uh, is battling or running away from 
toxic levels of loneliness. Talk to any codependent or perhaps yourself that outside of a relationship there's a feeling of intense loneliness, painful loneliness. Now this loneliness can be traced back to attachment trauma. But the codependent to avoid the loneliness finds themselves attracted to the narcissist. And when they're in that relationship, yes, it's dysfunctional, but the loneliness is held at bay. But when they are facing the opportunity or the situation of leaving the narcissist, or the narcissist should leave them, or they should be alone, or maybe broken up for a while, they experience that loneliness. Now this loneliness goes all the way back to their childhood. This toxic loneliness is what I call codependency's number one withdrawal symptom. In my upcoming book, I'm going to talk about codependency understood as an addiction, because I have no doubt that codependency is an addiction. So if codependency is an addiction, and in order to feel um, uh, the euphoria or the, the drug of sorts, the codependent needs to be in a relationship with a narcissist. It's counterintuitive because codependents aren't always happy with the narcissist because of course there's fights and arguments and you know narcissists are narcissists. But when they are in a relationship, albeit not always happy, they feel like they have a place on this earth. They feel like they belong to someone. Take that away, be outside of the relationship, break up with the relationship or break up with the narcissist, the codependent feels or gets in touch with the core shame that is connected to the core trauma. And that evokes it, the intense pathological levels of loneliness. So if you are an alcoholic, or for that matter, um, a heroin addict, and you would stop your drug of choice, you would go into intense withdrawal symptoms. And the codependent um, experiences the same. Ask any codependent who is in that situation, they will talk about the intense feelings of loneliness, the craving to go back to someone who they know is harmful, but will satiate um, that part of them that wants to be connected. I know this as a recovering codependent. Loneliness is enemy number one. If we are going to recover from codependency, we have to understand the power of loneliness. So I say to you, anyone watching this video, if you are going to take the very big step of breaking free from your narcissist, you have to prepare for excruciating levels of psychological pain, mainly loneliness. Much like I would say to my clients who are alcoholics, you have to prepare for um, DTs or withdrawal symptoms and they last for seven days to 14 days. Unfortunately, codependency addiction is much worse. The pathological or toxic levels of loneliness last for upwards to three months when in therapy. Now, it's important to say when in therapy. And I have seen, without a doubt, over and over again, my codependent clients go beyond this loneliness. So back to the point of this video. I'm here to tell you about your number one enemy in, in codependency recovery. It is to battle and to overcome the pathological levels of loneliness. Because of that fact, there, there is so much that you should do. First, have a therapist. Have a therapist that understands codependency and understands the withdrawal symptoms of codependency, mainly loneliness. Have a therapist that can connect the loneliness to the trauma and understand that this is really a reiteration of childhood trauma that you probably have never thought about or faced because that is, that is the key in getting better. Third, connection. Loneliness is the antithesis of connection. Loneliness can be solved through connection. And that is either through a codependency support group, a codependency 12-step group, um, church, synagogue, mosque. Um, there's so many ways that one can connect. The problem with loneliness 
the loneliness as a withdrawal symptom from codependency. It messes with your thought processes. It only tells you that loneliness goes away if you go back to the narcissist. Well, don't listen to it. Loneliness goes away when you connect with other people and you solve the primary problem of codependency. The primary problem of codependency is the absence of self-love. Now, it's not as easy to say if you want to get rid of your toxic levels of loneliness that you have to learn to love yourself. That's, that's a setup for failure. But what, I, what I'm saying is to solve the core loneliness connected to the core trauma, you have to connect. You have to learn that you're worthy in the eyes of others. You have to learn that you don't have to give up everything about yourself in order to be loved. And find out that people love you just for who you are. So in closing, I want to tell you the antidote to codependency. The antidote to codependency is self-love. The absence of self-love is pathological levels of loneliness, core shame, and being controlled by, this, by your attachment trauma. All codependency therapy and recovery um, is really about learning how to love oneself or healing those wounds that prevent ourselves to love others or to be loved. And once we figure this out and once we master it, it is, it is then we start to feel good about ourselves. We start to love ourselves. The loneliness goes away. So in closing, I want to thank you for watching this video. Thank you and find some self-love in your heart.